Well, friends, in this even if world, in this even if life, we still want to have a really vibrant life. We want to be really alive in the stories that we are living. And, and I think a lot of us over the last year particularly have really adopted some coping mechanisms, <laughs> some new ones. Some are healthy, some are unhealthy. Lisa, will you talk to us a little bit about like, why do we need coping mechanisms? Well, when we're in pain, pain always demands something to mm -hmm. quiet it. That's why people are much more eager to buy Tylenol and Advil than a multivitamin, right? Right. And so pain is driving that. And usually we have pain in our life either from the stress of a problem or from some sort of an intense emotion, like someone you love dies, and so the grief is a very intense emotion. Right. Or rejection is a very intense emotion. So we want to do something so that we can cope. So not all coping mechanisms are bad, right. but the secret is to find healthy coping mechanisms. And so a good question that I ask myself is, what part of this problem can I resolve or address, because sometimes I have a hard time, I'm in pain and I don't attach it to the right problem, oh, or I yeah. don't attach it to the <laughs> right emotion, right? right? And so maybe the first question is, what is the real crux of why I'm in this pain? And then I know it's either a problem that I need to solve some portion of this problem, or how do I care well for the intense emotion that I'm feeling? Not deny it, but care well for it. Yeah, Rebecca, you're so, good at helping us with our rhythms and, and how we build our lives. Help me, yeah. i.e. Oreos. How do we know <laughs> healthy <laughs> versus unhealthy coping? Like if we're allowed to have healthy coping mechanisms mm -hmm. in our inner lives, how do we find healthy versus unhealthy? Yeah, well, unhealthy would be where we need to go hide. You know, it's mm. going to be attached to shame on some level. It's yeah. going to be a like a private thing. Um, sometimes it's just a release valve, you know? We're just like, I need to go and, but it's not sustainable. It's not gonna lead to flourishing. So we always talk about like when Jesus says, come into my rest, rest re requires pursuit, not numbing out. So that's very different. So you can, you can numb out and escape, but you're not gonna leave that replenished. You yeah. can watch 25 episodes of Netflix all weekend long, but you don't, it doesn't revi revitalize you. Right, so the, the, sadly. The, yeah, sadly. I wish it did, right. and I wish Oreos did as well. Me too. <laughs> but the reality is the true rest, the true replenishment, actually the healthy version of coping will actually lead to flourishing. And so oh, you've wow. gotta find the sustainable rhythms that go, when I did that, I didn't really wanna do it, but after I did that, I felt more vibrant, I felt more alive. So whether that's taking a walk or having a consistent morning routine or having sitting in silence and just journaling, like those things that actually help you be more in tune with your heart, mm -hmm. the things that are hurting, naming those pains, yeah. um, then you're releasing something to God that he can speak into versus you just kind of like turning a blind eye to the right. source of that pain. Right, Lisa. Where does forgiveness play into this? Like once we, Rebecca, that's such a good thing for my brain to be like, okay, let me assess and look at all of these things and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Where does forgiveness play in? Well, I think a good question, another, I, I obviously, I ask myself a lot of questions. Yes, so um, a good question to ask is, even though this might feel good in the short term, how is it gonna play out in the long term? Wow. And so like forgiveness, for example, if, if I am feeling in the short term, it feels kind of good to be bitter. It feels kind of good to be resentful. It feels kind of good to you know, stonewall that person or shut them out. So, but if you play it out long term, it's gonna turn me into someone I don't wanna be. Right. And my heart is too beautiful of a place right. for bitterness, anger, rage, brawling, slander, all of that to come in and crowd out what I eventually want to do. So with forgiveness, I think one of the first steps to do is really ask yourself, is it time for me to stop suffering because of what this other person has done to me? Oh, somebody better write that down. Yeah. Is it time for me to stop suffering because mm -hmm. of what someone else did? That is good. And my answer to that is yes. yes. If I ask myself, should I forgive? Of course I should forgive. Do I feel like forgiving? No, I don't. Forgiveness can sometimes feel like such an unfair gift we have to give to the person who's hurting yes, us. it does. But what forgiveness really is, is God's provision to help the hurting heart heal. And when hurt sits too long inside of the human heart, it turns into versions of hate, 
So it's good if I just stick a stake in the ground and I say, it's time for me. I deserve to stop suffering because of what this other person has done to me. And so I unhitch my ability to heal. I don't have to wait for them to say they're sorry. I don't have to wait for them to suddenly become, you know, owning their issues and become super remorseful. No, I do not attach my ability to heal to the choices of another person. It's my choice and I get to heal. Therefore, I have the opportunity to participate in God's forgiveness. So good. good. Yes. So Rebecca, then what are the rhythms in our day Mm -hmm. where we've identified our feelings? Mm -hmm. We are recognizing sometimes this is unhealthy. Here's what's healthy to choose. I'm going to forgive but like, what's that like on a Tuesday? Right, exactly. Well, when you think about it, it's, it's that inner life, you know? Yeah. Am I okay? And that's when unforgiveness would, would show itself, right? So that inner life that says, am I okay? God, are we okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and if, if I'm kind of avoiding you, that means I'm avoiding my... I'm avoiding this as yes. well, you know, because you're going to reveal um, when David says, search me, O God, know my heart, test me, show me my anxious thoughts and lead me in the, um, see if there's anything wicked and lead me in the way. So that intimacy with God reveals and exposes so much. So I think the rhythms of our day have to begin with that inner life, that private world that just says, what is off here? And that's when forgiveness would show itself. Maybe, maybe we're shrinking back from something. Mm-hmm. Maybe God's called us to something and we're just like choosing fear over faith in right. stepping out. Maybe God is um, inviting us to reconcile with someone and we're, and we're, not, we're not sure about that. Or maybe yeah. we have suffered for a long time and we've, we've begun to take that way of despair, which is you believe things will never actually change. Wow. And so that, to me, I, I, I'm still, rhythmic living is very much inviting God into those secret places mm-hmm. and, and doing it in a consistent way. And I feel, Annie, you model this so well. You're so good with Sabbath. You're so good um, as a friend to just really make yourself vulnerable because vulnerability does cost us something. Yeah. And in relationship, we have to have that reciprocity where I'm being, not, I'm not the only one being vulnerable, you're doing it back and we're yeah. carrying each other's burden. So what, is that, what does that look like for you in your day? Um, uh, uh, your yeah, you know, I, I really don't like the phrase quiet time. I think that's, yeah. I'm like, I, when am I ever quiet? When right. am I ever quiet? <laughs> <laughs> and so that just doesn't fit for me. But, but what, what I'm hearing you say that rings really true to me is there is this like check-in every day. Yeah. And to me, that check-in with God and with, with my journal from yesterday yeah. and, and with the other resources in the morning is just kind of this like, I, I don't think I'm okay. Do you think I'm okay? Yeah. Are we good? No. Are we, okay. we good? Can we talk? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah that, that's how it feels. like, And I feel like you can only find a, an alive life, a vibrant life mm-hmm. when it starts from not having a quiet time every morning, though fine, call it that if you want to, but having this like check-in for sure. point that is a morning rhythm. Will you talk yeah. about the evening rhythm too? Sure. I love that. Well, I'm a big fan of taking inventory and that's, yeah. that's essentially what you're saying. Yep. And the four questions I, I always ask are what's right, what's wrong, what's confused, and what's missing. Now, I don't do that every day. Right, what's wrong, what's confused, what's Mm -hmm. missing. Because a lot of times we feel the big feelings that she's describing, the overwhelm, right? We feel big feelings, we need a fast fix for it. Um, But the fast fix doesn't, isn't a long fix, right? It's like, I need to clean out every closet in every room today (laughs) or I'm gonna go insane. (laughs) Because outer order creates inner order. And the reality is, is like, that might give you that temporary release, but that's not sustainable. You're not gonna clean out your closet every day. Um, So what are you gonna, what are the rhythms that are actually gonna be some guardrails for you um, that are required? So good night's sleep. You can't have a good morning routine if you have a horrible evening, yeah, right? If you're up yeah, scrolling till yeah. 1 a.m., oh, you, uh, better say that. you better forget waking up before the yes. sun. And I'm not saying you have to wake up before the sun, but if you've got kids and you want some quiet in your home, yeah. there's a strong chance you're going to have to beat them up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so for me, evenings are all about if, if a sunset re- is, it releases red light, which is natural melatonin for your body, then basically for me, my rhythm has become like when the sun goes down, my phone goes somewhere else because wow. God says that it's nighttime. So my phone releases That's blue good. light that says, wake up, wake up, wake up. Yeah. And so it's contrasting what God's actually 
naturally trying to do with me yep. physiologically. So yep. I put it in the other room. It's not that I ignore it completely. Um, I check it in case I miss something before I, but it's mm -hmm. in my bathroom. Um, and then one other thing that's very pragmatic is just like hushing the house, like lowering yeah, the lights, hushing the house, um, hushing the house right? I'm nice. um, turning down like the lights, the music, um, and then a brain dump before bed is so good for someone that's a little type A. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things happening right here at three in the morning. So I'll brain dump before bed. Just anything that might be, feel burdensome or, or stressful or just I can't forget about this. Yeah. And know that I can't do anything about it at 3 a.m. So it'd be better just get it offload yeah. it before I go to sleep. Yeah. And, and then some of those things are really like heart things that I just say, God, I'm trusting you with this. You're going to carry this. Um, meet me in my rest yeah. so that I can actually have a full night's sleep, which is a superpower. We have to sleep. So That's so good, Rebecca. You know, I, I, if I were listening today... I love all of the practical aspects of how do we do this. I love hush the house and I love putting the phone away. I also need practical ways when the intense emotions hit me. Yeah. It can almost feel like it's hijacking my mood. It's hijacking any kind of project that I have in front of me. And so I don't know. Even if, if you've ever... done all the things, yes. yeah. you can get triggered yes. or something can surprise you and all of a sudden the emotions are high. Exactly. Right. So for me, I have to have something practical and emotions, dealing with my emotions doesn't typically make me think of practical things. Right. I think of worst case scenarios. Yes. And so grabbing, like you admitted already, grabbing some Oreos. I mean, I didn't you know? admit it, but I might as well, yes. Okay. Well, I'm just helping. Thank Commenting you. for I'm, a friend. I'm helping draw this out. Thank you. You mentioned Oreos. I did. Let's continue with the path. Sure. It, it, it was a mention. <laughs> yeah. It was a gentle mention, kind of. Okay. So, but like, you know, it, I, we all relate to that, Annie, yeah. because sometimes God can feel very far away. Yeah. and. French fries can feel very close. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so, you know, or, you know, praying can feel like, is this really going to help me? It will. Mm -hmm. But a glass of wine might feel like it's going to be more effective right now. And so I think we just have to really pay attention to this. So for me, some practical things that I've learned, thank you, therapy, right. is if I will drink four ounces of water, Four ounces of huh. water is shown to reduce the body's anxiety level. Wow. I never knew that. How have I yeah. lived 50 years and never known? Like four ounces of water would be so helpful for me. Yeah. Also, I have to know the part of my brain that's firing, usually that amygdala where um, it's that fight, flight, freeze, and for me, freak out. I added that one. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> um, when that gets triggered, and that's usually like this intense emotion, um, I know now that it will take 20 minutes for that to calm down. Yeah. So all I have to do, my strategy emotionally, is all I have to do is do something healthy, have a healthy coping mechanism for 20 minutes, and that intense emotion will start to settle. Wow. So I will drink my four ounces of water. I'll go outside. I'll, if, it, if it's not too cold, I'll take my shoes off. I'll put my feet in the ground. I'll look up, and I'll say to myself, the sky is not falling. Right. Mm. Like this little piece wow. of my world might be falling apart, but the entire world is not falling yeah. apart. And some of those practical strategies for dealing with emotions are some of the most healthy coping mechanisms we find. Otherwise, if we don't get intentional and strategic about it, we're going to start grabbing Oreos, wine, yeah. French fries, yeah. whatever it is, right? Yeah. And so I think if we can have a plan, like yeah. you're talking about, Rebecca, yeah. it'll be very, very helpful. I love what you all are saying because... Uh, Rebecca, you t mentioned Netflix too. None of these things are bad. There isn't, right. food isn't good or bad. Netflix isn't good or bad. It's why are you using them the way you're using them? Yeah, the motive. And why are you interacting with them the way you're interacting with them? And anything and taken you. to an extreme. Right. You know, good yeah. things taken to an extreme eventually don't stay good. Yeah. Right. And, and so I think that's important to pay attention to. I'm thinking about one of the things that happened in the last year is a lot of people were lonelier than mm -hmm. they've ever been. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And putting your phone away at night when you live with a family is one thing. Putting your phone away at night when you live with yourself is not right. near as interesting. Exactly. And so can, can you just talk about what does it look like to have healthy coping mechanisms when you're lonely? Yeah, so when we're talking science here, so when you hold a hug with someone, which was really hard with COVID because you couldn't even be within six feet. Yes. But it's fine. I didn't hug someone for like literally seven weeks. It was 
horrible. Yes, because those initial weeks, we were like terrified yes. for our lives. We didn't, this thing was so ambiguous and we were just trying to put our best foot forward. Yes. Um, and then more we got into it, we're like, we actually can find a people, a group of yes. people that we're gonna be, our, they're gonna be our people during COVID or quarantine or whatever. Yeah. And the biggest um, revelation for me was when holding a hug, like a legit, not, not like an Instagram side hug, but uh -huh. like a legit <laughs> embrace, holding a hug for three to five seconds and not releasing it, releases dopamine in your brain, which is a feeling of connection and belonging. Wow. And so if you're single, and you are just desperate for that connection. So, so sometimes the phone will give you this talking to everyone, but not always connection. Right. It's, it's a faux connection. Right. But if you go over to your person's house or your person comes to your house and you're like, I need a hug. Like I need to be reminded that I'm not alone right now, yep. that I belong to this household of faith. I belong yep. to this extended family. Um, you're my sister. I'm your brother, whatever. Um, then, then that I do that with my kids. Like, and I had to get real intentional that even with friends, like single friends, especially during this last year, like, Hey, you are seen, you are loved, you belong. Um, because you're, it's exactly right. And I think sometimes we, the phone can be a counterfeit for that. Yeah. And it doesn't always really resolve that dopamine. The other piece is so practical is like, you're so good at this too, is um, like going for walks and getting outside yeah. and doing it with friends. You're getting, you're getting a twofer yeah. with rhythms there. You're getting the restore rhythm and the connect rhythm. Yeah. And the beauty of um, walking and for 15 minutes or more and raising your heart rate is that releases serotonin in your brain, which is that happy hormone. And it's the sense of goodwill and positivity and well-being, and it's like just keeps you going. So it, whatever those intentional things are that are rhythmic, you want to keep doing that. You want to keep using your legs a year from now. You want to keep walking and, and you want to keep hugging. Yeah. And so you're putting those practices in place that are just very natural that God made you to actually live out, knowing that those would just inherently be restorative for you. Yeah. yeah. So what has that been like for you, Annie? As far yeah, I mean, as like it, it is. I mean, I like what we're doing because we're setting up a lot of like, here are your options. You don't have to get up and read your Bible and then go stand in the yard and hug your friend and drink your water and cheers your Oreos and look at the sky. Like, we're not saying you have to do all those right now, but or I like- Or give awkward hugs. Or give, or hug. I'm, I'm like, a, don't hug the guy hugger. at the grocery store for five right. seconds without like letting him He's know like, you're trying you to get a dopamine here. hit. They Sorry, don't sir. Yeah. They, don't, they don't pay him enough yeah. for people like Yeah, that's us. right. Well, the guy last night told us to meet five new people every day. So let's hug them yeah. all for five seconds. Yeah. But then the mask and the shield, like yeah, how yeah, does yeah. that it's all work? Be exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, it has a lot of it requires a vulnerability of saying to people, yeah. "I feel lonely, yeah. and I am I am coping badly." Yeah, <laughs> I can tell I'm coping. I mean, I don't like having to do that, but that's what I love about Marco Polo is I can hit go and I can say it and and just be like talking to myself, but actually confessing to other people. Yeah, right. And Absolutely. going like, I need to tell. I mean, I say that Nancy, my mentor, a lot ago. Nancy, I need to tell you something and you're not going to like it, but I don't like it either. Send, you know, and that's it. <laughs> and so I think, right. part, I think conf the rhythm of confession yeah, absolutely. inside of uh, an even if life mm -hmm. is going to lead us to more vibrancy oh, and absolutely. more joy and more rest. When, yeah. when you're not trying to keep secrets and hold it all in, mm -hmm. uh, you sleep so much better, mm -hmm. I absolutely. think. Um, mm -hmm. Let's end on this. Did Jesus have coping mechanisms? How did he handle all this? I, I do love studying how he would re, um, retreat to the mountain and pray. You know, like he'd go out and he would just be who he is because he's God, right? Yeah. And he would just be um, so so nurturing and nourishing, um, bearing all this fruit for people to receive. But then he would just get quiet and he'd go back to the silence and he'd get before the, the Father or he would, he would, I just think he was very good. And then he also was really big on like rhythmic life with his disciples. Mm. You know, he didn't try to be all things to all people all the time. He right. really did invest in like a communal idea of like, we are communal people made by a communal God. And he, and he modeled that so well in friendship. And what, to, to your point that you're talking about, Annie, is that that connection and that intimacy was yeah. born out of real tactile, hands-on, frontal hug yeah. <laughs> friendship. Yeah. And, and I think he modeled that very beautifully. And if you look at the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray every single day, and when we dig into that, over half of the words are about confession and forgiveness. Wow. In other words, confession and forgiveness are supposed to be as much a part of our daily living as eating, breathing, sleeping, working, walking, wow. confessing, forgiving. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, I would love to pray for us mm -hmm. just to end. And, and my, my request would be for all of y'all with us, will you just open your hands? Let's open our hands and just ask God. He, these women have handed us some beautiful tools today to continue walking forward. And I just want God to hand you and hand me the ones that are right for us mm -hmm. and the ones that are gonna walk us into a healthy next season. So um, yeah, Lord, our hands are open because we want to be healthy. We want to make a difference on this planet. We don't wanna get taken out of this game by sin or uh, by frustration or by exhaustion. And so God, would you, I, I'm genuinely asking with our hands open, would you give us everything we need? Mm. Would you give us everything we need? You, you have everything and you generously gift us what we, need, what we need when we need it. And so our hands are open and available to you to help us cope on this planet, you are, um, your presence is our, is our greatest gift. <laughs> your presence is, is our greatest need. And so God, we ask for more of you. We love you in Jesus' name, amen. amen.